A monosynaptic, hold on, monosynaptic reflex would be like, for example, like we step on a pin and like our, what do you call it, let's say like you contract your quadriceps and your hamstrings relax. That's a monosynaptic reflex? Yeah, because to contract on the top. To contract on the top. It, is a, it goes straight from sensor, there's these sensors in your, like pain sensors in your feet, right. right? And they automatically go, they go to your spine and then automatically contract your hamstring without even have to do anything. So that's just monosynaptic. And you can see here, um, because there's no inner neuron for the stretch. So you could consider this one monosynaptic as well, because it synapses just once. But this guy, polysynaptic, right? Polysynaptic. There's one there, there's also one there. Okay. Reciprocal inhibition. Reciprocal inhibition. What is it? Inhibition? Mm -hmm. Inhibition, innervation, whatever. Innervation? That's it. the one where it's just like you go from your left leg to your right leg. Like yeah. You step on it and you, you put your right leg out. Mm -hmm. That's just reciprocal innervation. Oh, it? well, no. that's cross tar. That's cross yeah. extensor. That's cross extensor. Cross extensor is the, like, the, bot, the top is inhibited and maybe the bottom has to relax. So okay. It's just like both sides need to take the, the separate effects. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. You want to try you want me to draw that really quick, or do you feel okay about it? No, I think uh, that makes sense, like, because okay. obviously if, like, you're contracting your hamstrings, you can't contract your quadriceps, because then you the just have to step more on that nail, sure. you know? So it works through... One, one relaxes and contracts. Yeah. So that's the reciprocal innervation would be the rela relaxation and the contraction mm -hmm. on the other part, correct? Yeah, you can see, like, right here. Just kind of balance it out. Here's the pain receptor. It goes and it will, let's see, cause, oh yeah, an excitatory inner neuron to contract move your hamstring. So I guess actually, if we're talking about reciprocal innervation as a part of the withdrawal reflex, then this would be polysynaptic. Polysynaptic. Yeah. <clears throat> polysynaptic. So anytime there's more than one synapse, mm -hmm. it's a polysynaptic. Yeah. Anytime there's an inner neuron. So so the Golgi tendon then is monosynaptic always. Golgi to tendon is poly. That's poly. I think so the only of these yeah. mono, mono is just stretch, I think. Yeah, inner neuron. Inner neuron, inner neuron. Okay. They all have inner neurons except for stretch. Okay. Okay, why why is stretch only one? Um, no inner neuron? Yeah, yeah, it has no inner neuron. Um well, partly because like these other ones, like you're stepping on something. You're trying to remove it quickly, and you probably has to do with like you're trying to shift to the other side. Um, but why doesn't it? I think because the only thing it's focusing on is the one muscle is being stretched, and this one isn't being contracted. So, yeah, I'm not 100% sure, but it's more of an isolated problem, I guess. Okay. Just dealing with the one, because yeah, because Golgi, and also because it wants to excite it to. Like this one needs inhibitory, so it needs an inner neuron. Okay, so is the alpha motor mo motor neuron is that always going to be the efferent? Yeah, because that's the same motor neuron that you use to voluntarily move your leg. Okay. But it also innervates it, or this goal, this sensory neuron and spindle also innervates that same. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. You had questions. You wanted uh, something you wanted to go over? No. Just keep going. Uh, the only thing is, in class, remember when he was just today going over like extrafusal and intrafusal. Oh, like, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it might be good to kind of just explain. That's true. What's it to do with the spindle? He hadn't mentioned it, and he was right. He said, I don't know if I went over this very much in class. And yeah. He had because I had never heard of that. Yeah. Let's see. Pretty sure those have to do with the spindle. What I remember is that the. He mentions it here. The intrafusal. Oh, Oh yeah, it's just that stuff. There. It's the same thing. Uh, so, okay. Oh yeah. So it says that the gamma motor neurons. They innervate the ends of the spindle fiber. See. Originating from the spinal cord, controlling the sensitivity of the muscle spindle cells. 
So they they they're what causes the spindle around the spindle to contract with the muscle. That makes sense. So around here it causes it to contract with the muscle, keeping him sensitive. Because if the muscle around it contracted and he stayed floppy, he wouldn't be able to detect stretch, right? Mm -hmm. okay. So it's kind of a way to keep it kind of keep that tension so you okay. can continue to detect stretch even if you're, you're contracting. It maintains the tension. Of yeah. Muscle and then the sensory neurons are the ones that actually detect the stretch. Um, and then the extrafusal and intrafusal, do you remember what he said about it? All he said is that the alpha motor neuron is with the extrafusal and the gamma motor neuron is with the intrafusal, if I remember right. Intrafusal? Yeah. yeah, it says right here, gamma motor sets tension mm -hmm. and sensitivity. Uh, extrafusal fusal is a contraction. Oh. So then this lower, so the alpha motor neuron would be the extrafusal. Yeah, yeah that's okay. what I said. Right, right, right. Yeah, that totally makes sense because yeah, yeah, they are in those spindle fibers. So, and then the... So intrafusal will be the one that's specifically connecting to, that's regulating the stretch of the, or the contraction of this guy. Okay. Of this, yeah, because it says muscle spindle fibers are sensitive to stretch. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the extrafusal, I think, are just everything else around it that's innervated by okay. the... Right. Yeah, that, that's actually what I remember now that we're talking about it. Yep, and extrafusal, like you said, alpha motor. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everything around it, intrafusal are ones that specifically keep that guy taut, keep tension. Okay, so in those situations, what's the afferent, what's the efferent pathways? You know, Jose? Yeah, so well, the alpha motor neuron would be the efferent pathway, okay. right? And so the sensory neuron, and pretty much the gamma motor neuron, it's just like, it's like a sensor, right? Gamma, because yeah. it's keeping that sensitivity. It, it, it keeps it. Yeah, it keeps it the tension there, but then there's the sensory neurons that actually kind of send a signal of how much stretch is going on. Exactly. So they send the, that's the afferent way, mm -hmm. and they they always send it to the CNS, right? Reflexes. The CNS. Yeah. Yeah, it goes to the system. spine. It goes mm -hmm. to the spine. Straight to the spine, but then it doesn't go to the brain, right? No. It goes straight back to the leg. Mm -hmm. So you don't you don't even, you don't decide. The brain doesn't decide. It's right. just automatic. Okay. Okay. So the brain always. Uh, Probably more the sensory neuron would be the sensory neuron. Sensory neuron is uh, afferent. Okay. Yeah, gamma is just like it, ch it, it keeps the sensitivity, mm -hmm. like yeah. you know, make sure, like, I mean, it just keeps it in balance. It, exactly, so it, it sets the tension exactly. Perfect. Okay.